Well, the National Party's pledged to stop what it calls a bloated bureaucracy is causing concern amongst the union that represents thousands of public servants. Leader John Key says if elected, his government would put a cap on the number of bureaucrats. And he claims the number of public servants has grown under Labour by nearly 40%. It's time to focus public spending on frontline services that make a real difference in people's lives, rather than paper shuffling and report writing that does not. So has that growth been necessary? We're joined now by the National Secretary of the Public Service Association, Richard Wagstaff. Good morning to you, Richard. Good morning. What, what do you make of John Key's comments? Well, I think it, it's a political speech, of course, and it tends to be selective and emotive, and the sense of proportion, I think, is missing a bit in there. He makes a, a, a distinction which isn't very helpful between frontline staff and what he calls bureaucrats, and then he mixes up numbers, which gives an impression which um, we don't think is very fair or real. Okay, for well, example, so t tell us, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So, for example, he talks about 36,000 bureaucrats. Um, as opposed to frontline staff, well, there's only around 40,000 public servants in total. Uh, that, that's quite misleading to suggest that most public servants have, uh, are in the back office. Far from it, the vast majority of public servants are at the front line, and the vast majority of the growth in public service servants has come at the front line. Okay. Do you think we have an excessive number? You mentioned 40,000. He's saying we've got 55,000 public servants in this country. Who's correct? Well, it depends how, how you count them and what you're referring to. But core public service or, or the public service normally refers to uh, that part of the state which isn't the health service or the state-owned enterprises or the education service. But we're talking about you know, the things that most of us know, you know the justice system, the, the, the uh, border control, the um, conservation, all those things. That, that's what we're referring to here. Okay. And, and those places have seen real increases in demand. Uh, you think of the borders, for example, the extra tourists we've seen, the, the terrorist threats we've received. You can't simply just say, well, we're going to place a cap on that, there's going to be no more demand. Secondly, if you say we're going to place a cap on it, well, that means you're not going to do anything different or anything new. Or if you are going to do something new, you're going to have to either cut things that are there at the moment, or perhaps privatise some of that, and we haven't got any answers to those issues that, that have been raised. Okay, well 10,000 people have been employed in the public se sector um, under Labour since 2000. Has that been necessary, and how many of them have been frontline staff? Well, I think it absolutely has been necessary. If you recall back in 99, uh, the election itself was uh, was difficult to count because we didn't have um, an experienced uh, and, and a national system in the public service to do it. Uh, a short while later, we had government departments outsourcing uh, and getting outsiders to provide advice to the incoming government. These are simply core features of a public service that had been so run down it couldn't do it. So in our view it has been important. If you look at the public service in New Zealand compared to other countries in the OECD, ours is only average in its size. It's certainly not larger than the average and certainly many countries that outperform us have more uh, larger public services than we do. So I think a sense of proportion is important here. Okay, so and that, sorry, carry on. And let's, let's just be fair about, and, uh, about the sort of emotive language that's there about you know, so-called bureaucrats, but we won't cut doctors and nurses, we hear. Well, a lot of the people in the public service do very important work that the public doesn't always understand. For example, you think of the people at the border control. You think of the probation officers. These kinds of people may not be um, in the politicians' minds and, and, and the sorts of things that will get votes, but if we don't have them, we won't have a well-functioning society, and they're absolutely vital. OK, well, National says that they want to put more staff onto the front line. Are you saying there's enough staff on the front line? We're saying that there needs to be constant uh, measuring and, and looking at what we do need, and, and that is there. Uh, we think that the demands, if you talk to our members, they'll tell you that they are only just doing uh, as much as they can. And, in fact, many of our members would say there probably is room for streamlining some of the monitoring, some of the accounting that's going on, but in fact it's the politicians themselves who want very high standards of risk management. And if there's any way that we could investigate to look at better ways of doing things, some of our members would say, well, perhaps we can look there. But in terms of the amount of work going on, public servants are very busy. That's been borne out by surveys. They work long hours. They work very hard. And New Zealand's public services are of a very high standard.